Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs. Welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory, where we're filming at the Cablevision Studios in lovely Suffolk County, New York, with my amazing crew, Donald Caulfield, who's got his uh, MAGA hat on today, looking to cause some trouble, Phil Antonucci uh, on Facebook Live and Camera 2, and our producer, Andy Herzman. My guest today is Maya Kalman from Savvy Kink Radio. I found out about this show. I just recently found out about uh, Spotify, and uh, because I actually got sick of paying the Cablevision insane or Altice, whatever you want to call it, prices for cable, because they raised my cable bill so much, and it just got me so freaking pissed off. And I'm not home that much. So I said, you know what? I'm going to cancel it, and I'm going to try to live and try to learn how it was like to live in the uh, caveman era when there was no cable vision uh, in the house. And but do that, I have unlimited internet on my phone. So I started scrolling through the phone, and I found this thing on Spotify, and I'm scrolling through through it and I found a show called Savvy Kink Radio and uh, messaged out to uh, my guest today, Maya Coleman, and said, you know what, let me get her on the show and find out uh, a little bit about uh, about the radio stuff. So Maya, welcome to Long Island Backstory. Is this your first uh, uh, television interview? Uh, no, it's not. When did this show start? Did I just get lucky to find Savvy Kink Radio right at the beginning? You did, actually. You got pretty lucky. Okay. We just started recording um, a few episodes. So we're just, just recently started a few uh, weeks ago. Because when I saw it looks like it's been going on forever. You know, you have your uh, your your friend and co-host, uh, Catherine Corella, who That's was actually right. a guest on Long Island Backstory a few episodes ago. So, exactly. Uh, now we've got you on this show. So tell me, first of all, how, tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, where you're from, where you live. Uh, Don't give your street address. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. Uh, <laughs> originally from Israel, born and bred. Um, lived in North Jersey for a while, and then uh, ever since college, have been living in the city, various places. So how do you how do you end up as as I asked your uh, co-host Catherine how she ended up from L.A. to Long Island? How do you end up from, uh, from Israel, Israel to, to, uh, to, to Suffolk County? Uh, it was a long schlep. And um, <laughs> my parents, my parents moved uh, to the states when I was a child. Oh, okay. So you, so you pretty much were, were here most of your. Uh, yes, your life. I grew up in, in the U.S. Um, I summered in Israel. Oh, okay. So. And, and how did you meet your co-host, uh, Catherine? You know, Catherine and I actually met at an amazing networking event, a uh, Suffolk County networking event a couple months ago. Well, actually, it'll be almost a year ago. So um, that's how, yeah, that's how we met and at you, a networking event. Did you have a career in radio, and, and that's how this came about? No, or actually, I have a career, I have a very successful career in uh, event design. I've okay. been running a luxury event design business for the last 20 years in New York City. And um, Catherine and I met at this networking event and just immediately were just awestruck by each other. Um, I think power women gravitate towards power women. Right. And, um, and you know, we immediately started talking about her radio show and my wanting to do a new radio show. We started talking about ideas and Savvy Kink was born. So you were never in broadcasting before? No, I've done TV shows for my past uh, event company. I've okay. done a lot of uh, TV weddings. A okay, lot. but you were never you were never the host on the show. Uh, you, you were a guest, you're saying? That's they they were following our my company. Oh, okay. So was it hard for you to, to learn how to do this to get? Because when I watched the show, you guys are like natu really natural together. We really are. I it. think it just it's something that I've always wanted to do, and I think I have a natural talent for it. And um, you know, people in TV always told me that I was a one take wonder. So I think that's a good compliment. And yeah. I love to talk, and um, I always wanted to be on the radio. Ever since the days of Dr. Ruth and Dr. <laughs> Drew, I've always wanted to do a radio show. So, well, so you, but you were in event planning, so what made you decide to do this show, uh, Savvy Kink? How did, how did that come about? You know, I think it just uh, is a process of starting to realize that I'm going to be 20 years in my other business, and, um, and I wanted to do something new. It's time to do. But you could have done other topics. You could have done whatever, you know, families. You could have done. You Everything's know, uh, been anything. done, and I think um, I am definitely, you know, uh, Catherine is the is the nice, and I'm the naughty. Okay. You know, I'll always be in black. She'll always be in pink. Uh -huh. It's that kind of a of a relationship that we have together. So. Um, you know, I, I wanted to do something that I've always wanted to do, which is have a 
women's run um, sex talk show. So tell us a little bit, the, the viewers who are watching, tell, tell us what is uh, uh, Savvy Kink Radio? Savvy Kink Radio is, is a talk show about sex from the point of view of two very similar but very different women. And so we are, we want to be able to start to get women and men to um, own their sexuality, to be able to talk about sex, to be able to ask questions about it, to be able to be more comfortable talking to their spouse or their partners. Um, I think that uh, as much as people have grown in the new millennium and, and things are becoming more and more acceptable, there's also, I, I still think, a lot of taboos and a lot of um, people that really feel uncomfortable talking Talking, especially women right. so Season. I really want to show them that a woman just like them or more out going than them um, is willing to talk about anything because I think as a guy you know we always sit around you know with a bunch of guys and we talk about sex right you know I don't maybe I don't I shouldn't say because I don't know what you guys talk about when you're in private I guess that the we show talk gives about me sex a, also. a better idea <laughs> you know but uh, you, you mentioned that there's, there's still taboos what are some of the taboos that women normally traditionally would wouldn't talk about I think women have a hard time talking about what they want what they need what they're not getting you know um, I think women definitely have issues talking about toys, sex toys, or ways oh, we're not to bring about Monopoly or something. No, oh, we're not okay. talking Those about Monopoly toys. or exactly <laughs> twister, now it's easier. twister of a different type. <laughs> yeah. But so, now it's easier, right? Because you can get it on the internet. So there's not like you have to walk into a you know a dirty Right, you can shop order or, you can order everything online. Um, and you'll be able to order things from savvykink.com online in the future. Um, we are a luxury destination. So I come from a luxury background of being in event design. Um, I do luxury events and this is a another arm of what I specialize in, which is, um, is you know, bringing uh, a certain level of class to everything. So I want people to realize that you can talk about kink and you can talk about dating and you can talk about sex um, and you don't have to be crass, and, um, but you can have fun and um, that you shouldn't be shy about anything. Right, so do you, do you give advice on the show? Uh, we do. We give advice. We've got um, almost 500 followers on our Savvy Kink Radio I think you have a lot more Facebook now that you've done page. The show, so hopefully, we, we we're hoping, fun. and we're looking for more women. You know, I really want to hear from women. I really want to know what they want to talk about, but what they want to hear but about. Why not men? Why not well, the men, men watching easy. and learning what they, well, they are. can watch they're it? They're already what... there. They're already there and they're joining right. and you know, or just got, listening, right? Exactly. You've got two beautiful women that are talking about. Um, sex and dating and kinkiness and so the men are there but the women I want the women to get um, get on board and realize that uh, we're here to talk let's let's talk let's be real let's go over our concerns and let's teach men and women um, how to satisfy each other and themselves right so what what is some of the the advice that that you give women? well what are some of the main questions that come up you have like a is there like a common theme of people calling every in? day on the on the web page we bring up a different topic so there's all different topics to be had in terms of um, questions we've been talking about fantasies and fetishes and um, so what's the, the most outrageous place well, you've well, ever well, had sex. you're not getting past the fantasy <laughs> thing so what we, we all know what guys fantasies are right right and I'm not gonna which say one, that because my family is watching <laughs> so, but we know we know which is like a couple fantasies you know all the guys right. you, know, you fantasize a, about having more the than threesome. one exactly. of course there's well a, not just the threesome it's, it's the two women threesome not, yes right not, right exactly not the other threesome yes, exactly. I have, some people do but that, that's, but that could be that's a fan. perfect point is like your wife is no. probably if your wife says yes to the threesome of the two women and one guy you also have to be up for the threesome of the two guys and the <laughs> right. one woman so yeah, right well I think they are, you know and I've read and uh, I don't know if it's true that they say that you know guys have fantasies but they really don't actually want them to happen it's more of a fantasy it's better as a fantasy I don't know if that's true or I don't do you think find that's that true women? I think okay. that that's just um, you know a guy giving up hope and saying <laughs> And saying yeah. that you know it might not ever happen in my lifetime, right. but I can I can like dream about it. About yeah, it. It's exactly. like, like winning the lottery. Right. Um, it's I, not well, really that hard, and that's the point. I think that's the point of having Savvy Kink and having a sex talk show radio um, that's hosted by women and driven by women. Is I don't think men realize how much women think about sex, how much we love it and enjoy it, and um, and want our partners to enjoy it also and want them to know like what we like what we don't like so what is the woman's most popular fantasy 
Hmm. Is there a common one? Um, I think the most popular fantasy is a little bit of um, letting letting go of your guard. So um, being blindfolded, being restrained, um, that kind of like being taken by a by a very sexy gentleman. So like, you know, he's a gentleman outside, but a wolf in right. the bedroom. And so what? Are, and okay, so that's uh, no. But you, what do you suggest they do? Do you suggest that they tell their partner that hey, this you know I've been married for 10, 15 years. They watch your show. They come home and they say, hey, honey, I want you to tie me up and and blindfold me. How does that go? I mean, I, I, I think it would some be, guys might be like, oh wait a minute, that's not yeah, who I married. Yeah, exactly. You know? Well, I think it becomes as a suggestion. You know, I think uh, there's a couple ways to bring it up you know you can do that you can meet the partner at home with a bottle of wine and say hey there was something I wanted to talk to you about let's have a glass of wine and talk about it in front of the fireplace mm -hmm. um, or you can bring it up during play you know I think uh, sex talk and foreplay and when you're getting busy um, is when you want to whisper those ideas into somebody's ear and, and let them kind of resonate. You might not have to take action on them right away, right. but they're small hints that you're gonna you're gonna plant little seeds. So the, for the for the men who are watching the show, and the, what is the thing Hi, that guys. that women call up and say, "I wish my boyfriend, spouse, husband, whatever." would do X, Y, Z? I think for women, it's attentiveness. Um, I think women suffer from jealousy. Jealousy is rooted in a fear of loss. And the fear of loss comes from not being reassured. I don't think that men realize um, how easy it is to make your woman not jealous. And, but what well, they have points. to work. Have but to they do? have to work at it. What they have to do is constantly reassure their partner. So you want somebody who every day gives you a compliment, every day tells you why they like you. Mm. You know, not only just I love you, but this is what I like about you. Thanks so much for doing this thing. Thanks. You know, you look so pretty in that. You smell great. You. But you want to be doing that for each other. You know, mm. for every woman that says she doesn't get that is a man that says he's never gotten it either. Right. So you have to, in order to keep a happy, long-standing relationship, I mean, I'm with my husband 29 years, so um, I think I can speak. Uh -huh. So now you're talking about all these things that we. I'm thinking now you probably suggested to your husband and his family's watching, and uh, so, how, so how, how do you deal with that? Because you're like, you're talking about these things, you know, I'm sort of joking, openly. But, but you're talking about them openly, and I'm sure somebody's going to tune in. I don't know if you have children. I do. I have so, a 12-year-old son. Okay, so your son may watch this and say, oh, he my knows. God, my mom just talked about dildos. Yep, he totally knows. He yeah. knows uh, ever and since. Do you have a conversation with him? Hey, mom's going to be talking about uh, these he things? He knows or mom is an outspoken woman, um, that she's a CEO, and she's been uh, outspoken about a lot of different things in life, but sex has always been a Open, easy uh, conversation in our house. You know, and same thing with my husband. You know, right. we've always the 29 years together. We've always had a great relationship, a great friendship, and we talk about everything. And so he's been a big um, help to my self-esteem and my ability to get comfortable. But I also believe that you know we are grown adults. You know, we are adults with sexuality and sexual needs and sexual wants and it is part of your mental health to have a happy sex life and I think it's sad state of affairs that so many married people don't have sex and I think it's a sad state of affairs that so many people um, don't feel comfortable talking about it men or women so um, you know I find that if someone's gonna be embarrassed and say oh my god your parents see this or your kid sees this or you know what? We're all adults. We're all having sex, hopefully. No, except my parents never yeah. do. <laughs> You'd be they surprised. Definitely, no, no, don't you say that. Don't surprised. say that. I, I hate don't think, to tell I don't you. Think that, thank God I was never one of the ones that walked in on my I parents. I hate you know, to those tell stories, you. People have nightmares about it. <laughs> but you know, it's funny, Mike. You talk about talking about talking about sex, and we have to talk about sex. But isn't there a trend now? towards we can't talk about sex because of sexual harassment people feel uncomfortable and you know the millennials say oh you offended me because you talked about sex so you're saying we need to be more open and talk about sex but yet I think the younger generation is coming in saying I don't want to you're not allowed to talk about sex because if I hear it you will offend me or no upset me. I don't think it's what offends people I think talking about sex is not offensive to the younger generation and the younger generation is very anti-marriage very pro polyamory very 
very big on open relationships, sometimes relationships with multiple people, depending on long distance relationships and different lifestyles. So I think the younger millennials and, and the younger audiences are definitely um, open to those conversations, but I think that um, older people are going to gravitate. Whoa, whoa, older. What's older people? Well, I think I, <laughs> I think, think I'm one of those older people, I, Mario. I, What's we older are about too. You? <laughs> but I, I think people will realize that it's a necessity. It's something that needs to be talked about, and um, inappropriate touch or inappropriate comments are inappropriate because the other person didn't want to be a part of that conversation. We are a radio show and a website where you're coming to us because you want to hear this, you want to talk about it. Um, it's inappropriate to come on to someone or to talk about something sexual in the workplace when you know that that's not the appropriate place. Right. But when you ask somebody's consent, you know, it's all, it's all about consent. Okay, so let's talk about porn. Okay. Um, I love porn. <laughs> so, there's, uh, <laughs> I mean, we have all these porn websites, but you know, there's still, you know, you see all these things. Oh, porn ruined their, our relationship. What, what's your feeling on men watching porn, women watching porn? I think everybody porn in should general? watch porn. Porn is great. I think everybody should watch porn. I think porn does not um, objectify women or harm women. I think that there's definitely a problem in this country with a rape culture, mm -hmm. and not um, and not having. Uh, you know, the, the right uh, attitude towards women. But I do believe that once you are in a relationship or um, grown adults, I think uh, both men and women should watch it. I think both men and women should allow themselves to enjoy it. I think it's smart for couples, whether married or not, to do it together, mm -hmm. watch porn together. I think that's a great way to start and get the fire going. Um, and I think women are against porn out of jealousy. Again, it's a fear of loss. It's the fear that you want that, not me. Um, I don't think women allow themselves to understand that when a man, when your partner actually says, no, I love you, I want to be with you, you make me happy, um, they don't believe it. You know, right. they have to start to learn to believe it, that, that it's not a competition. Right. So uh, what about prostitution then? What's your feeling on prostitution? I think prostitution and, and sex work should be legal. I think we'd have a much safer situation uh, um, if it was legalized. Okay. And so what are the other issues, that, that, that topics that you guys, I know you've only had a handful of shows even though yeah. I thought it's been around forever. Exactly. What are, what are some, of the, some of the other topics that, uh, that you've recently spoken about? Uh, well, coming up topics are going to be, uh, we've got a male escort that's going to come on. I've never met a male escort before, so I'm excited to hear <laughs> about the business and Right. How much he charges? Is there male escorts on Long Island? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Yeah. So there are women that want um, escorts. So I'm gonna we're gonna find out more about that this week. Okay. Um, and I think that we're gonna continue talking about different fantasies. Um, we started dipping in a little bit with BDSM and fetishes what, what, and kinks. What's BDSM? Sorry. So different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one that doesn't know. Listen, I just learned the last show what a catfish was. So what, what, yeah. what is a D BDSM? D so um, so BDSM are different forms of. Um, of uh, restraints and fetishes and kinks and sadomasochism and all scary words, um, bondage, um, but... Um, that scares me right because I hate pain. See, but pa bondage doesn't have to be pain. Oh, bondage really? could I, be really just like restraints, that. you know, right. just being restrained or being held down or being... Um, you know, pushed up against the wall. Women love that. A good, oh, really? a good hard push against the wall. So and that's a kiss. My, Maya's tip of the day. Maya's tip of the day <laughs> is come behind her. Well, all right. First, you have to know her. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't want to get sued. I was just right? going to say, come behind her and kiss her neck. Okay. No, that's not the way. Uh, okay. But don't no, do that in the workplace. <laughs> don't do that in the workplace or with someone that isn't expecting it. Right. But if you have a partner, uh, women love a gentleman to come up behind her and give her a kiss on the neck and whisper something sweet in her ear. Um, that, that's my not tip what's, of the not day. Not what's for dinner. Uh, you know, <laughs> if you say it sexy enough and you give her a kiss, that you might be able to get away with what's for dinner. What's, what about sending flowers? Is that like sending say, flowers is awesome. Uh, is awesome. Women yeah, love gifts. Yes, uh, women guess. love gifts. <laughs> I don't think you can ever go wrong with a present. So we, we were, uh, at, uh, about a week ago, we had uh, your your, uh, your co-host, Catherine, co Catherine, on the show. And uh, again, she was talking about dating. Do you guys talk about uh, dating and, you know, I guess as it relates to sex and dating, and we were talking about where you meet people. We and, do. Uh, you know, how do you go out, you know, do you go to the certain place to meet people that have your, your same interests? Do you believe in online, uh, online dating? Where, where do you think 
for the women watching who say, I want to find somebody, you know, on Long Island, because we're Long Island backstory. Right. Where, where would they meet somebody? What's your advice? I think I tell all of my, my single women um, to go to networking events. That's the best place, I think, to meet a successful, handsome man. Okay. They're not always going to be single, so, you know, <laughs> you have to know that going in. Right. Um, but, um, and I think that the websites are great. I think you have to be honest in those websites in your profile. I think you have to be overly honest to really what weed you, out you, the what garbage. What do you mean by overly honest? I think you can't, you know, you can't pussyfoot around what you want, what you don't want. You know, if you're, if you're divorced or separated, you already know what didn't work. So why not let them know what's not going to work? But don't you know? people tend to go for the same thing subconsciously? They do, but hopefully they've learned from their mistake. And, and um, you know, I, I've seen so many friends go through divorces, I would never want to But it's hard for you that. because you, you've been happily, well, you didn't say happily married. You said married. <laughs> no, I think you did say happily married. But you've been married for, for a long time. So can you, you relate to these people who have... Uh, you know, who, who are divorced, because I think it's a diff it is a different world when you're starting to date, you know, and you're divorced and right. you're middle-aged, you know, and a lot of the men out there have baggage, you know, because they're and paying not Louis child Vuitton. support. No, <laughs> certainly not Louis Vuitton, because they're paying child support, many of them. Right. And it's, well, a lot of them, you may have a successful man, but he, he doesn't have the money anymore because he's paying so much in spousal support and child support. And, you know, he may, he may be successful, but doesn't have the money because we're on Long Island. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, that's got to be an issue. Do you put up with that and say, well, he's a good guy, you know, because you were talking about how, you know, you want them to have a job. Yes, you so do need them to have a job. Is it just a job or do they have to have a lot of uh, extra income? I think at this point of our lives, at our age, um, I think you're looking for somebody who's got stability. Right. You're hoping that they're not still living with their mom. Right. You hope that they've got their own bank well, account. we're on Long Island. That's about 40% of the single guys on I Long know. Island. I know, trust me, I, mean, I know. Hear it, right? I'm in the city all the time, so when I come out to Long Island, and I see it's a little bit of an eye opener. Right. I'm not yeah, used to it. It is. It's unfortunate, you know. So, so no dating people that live with their parents. Um, I don't want to say no because sometimes, uh, you know, there's always different circumstances. circumstances right. But um, you know, on the whole, but I'm thinking you wanna... the bondage is gonna be a little tough when you're like your parents are upstairs and you snap in the whip downstairs. It's right. gonna be uh, like what's going on down there? It's gonna be a little there? bit of a turnoff, Nothing. right? Everything's fine, Ma. Go back to bed. Yeah, exactly. I think that, that's when you go to the Comac Motor in or, or yeah, something exactly, like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Great. So we only have a few minutes left. Do you have any uh, any other last minute advice you want to give to people for uh, a healthy? Sexually happy relationship. I think conversation and and communication is but so men don't important. Like talking, Maya. We're not big That's talkers. not true. Okay, I'm speaking for myself. Yeah. Edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you were unhappy, would you talk to your wife? Yeah, I asked for a divorce. <laughs> I did it <laughs> before, before you asked for the divorce. Did you want more sex? Uh, yeah, I think you try. I mean, you know, but, but if and you don't that's get the whole point. Anything, What's the trying? Up, right? And so you don't get anything because she isn't really confident in knowing what that anything is, or making it happen, or figuring out a way for you both to get on the same page. And so that's really what I'm trying to well, bring. Well, for me, to my the wife table. is having sex with everybody else, so she. Probably didn't need it. Maybe for an me. open relationship was the <laughs> well, key. Is, is there such thing as a 50% open relationship? Or like, yes. half, half the person knows it's open, the other half doesn't know no, it's open? Both should oh, know. Both, have to both know. should uh, know. But you she can, didn't watch your show. You can have, exactly. <laughs> See, call me. Call, no. <laughs> um, you can have a polyamorous relationship. Um, where uh, she'd be the hinge. Mm -hmm. So basically, she's having a relationship with somebody and she's married to you, but you guys don't interact. Right, wow, she would love it. She's watching this show. So Mike, <laughs> thanks, thanks so much for coming on the show. Well, again, tell everybody where they, can, where they can find the show if they want to watch it. So on Facebook, you can join our group, Savvy Kink Radio. So all you have to do is um, look for it in the search and join our group. It's a closed group, so no one else knows that you're in it, except for the people that are in the group. Um, um, so you won't be outed in any way on Facebook. Um, and SavvyKink.com is our website, um, our luxury portal, and you'll be able to find parties, events, um, lingerie, toys, all different kinds of links there. Great.
Thanks so much. Thanks Maya. so much for having us. And if us. you like what if you like what you guys see when you're watching the show, please go to the YouTube channel and click subscribe, and you'll be notified every time we uh, every time we put a new show up on here. If you're on Facebook, please click share. Uh, we really appreciate uh, all that support. Uh, we don't make any money doing the show. We don't charge anything. We're totally independent. That's why we can have crazy guests like Maya on the show <laughs> and not have to worry about uh, losing any sponsors. Because if we did have sponsors, we probably just we're sponsored by the Comac Inn. Um, and who good, else did we mention? I'm thinking like liquor companies. And are Prime. Probably, and Prime, exactly. Who else, who else yeah. did we? And Cougars. Uh, Cougars. <laughs> Cougars. Cougars across Suffolk Coug County. Cougars are us. Well, <laughs> Cougars, Cougars are well, us. welcome to go to Saturday Exactly. Kids. I'm Gary Jacobs, and we'll see everybody next week. Long Island Backstory is made possible in part by Americans for Legal Reform, the oldest, most successful legal group in the world, P.O. Box 2679, Huntington Station, New York 11746, telephone 631-421-6390, website Americans, the number four, legalreform.com. Todd's a great guy. I mean... Look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. started. Oh. Oh Our back and forth. Victory. Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Nice. I tried Oxy at a couple of parties. I didn't know it'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. <sighs> Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Gary Jacobs and Long Island Backstory, winner of the Huntington Lodge No. 124's 2018 Community Service Award in recognition of the efforts to offer an alternative access to news stories of interest to all Long Islanders.